You're watching Capital Conversations with Congressman Mike McIntyre. An opportunity for the people of southeastern North Carolina to get an inside look at the issues facing the nation and the U.S. Congress. I invite you to see how your community is affected. Now, from Washington, D.C., here's Congressman Mike McIntyre. Welcome to this edition of Capitol Conversations. I'm Congressman Mike McIntyre, and we're coming to you from Capitol Hill here in Washington, where we have very many special guests here this week for our annual Business and Economic Summit. Uh, this year's theme is taking care of business, and that's exactly what we need to do. We know that jobs and the economy are the number one issue, not only for our area of North Carolina, but for all of our great state, and indeed, all of our great country. And so today we have on our show some leaders from communities throughout southeastern North Carolina who are among the 250 business and civic leaders who are here in Washington from different parts of North Carolina, the most of whom are from our congressional district. And they're here in town to talk about the concerns about jobs and business development and the economy. And it will not only be an opportunity for me to hear from them and to hear about concerns back home, but also it'll be an opportunity for many national policymakers to be involved in this. We're going to have leaders of both political parties and from both houses in the U.S. Congress, the Senate and the U.S. House of Representatives, and folks from the administration and folks from various federal regulatory agencies to talk about the seriousness of jobs and businesses in our area. So today I certainly want to welcome those who are with us. We have Jonathan Barfield, uh, who is with the Greater Wilmington Chamber of Commerce, but also chairman of the New Hanover County Commissioners, Jay Britt with the Lumberton Chamber of Commerce, Esther Scott with the White Bull Chamber of Commerce, and Gary Herring from the Clinton Sampson Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to all of you all today. I'm glad that you are with us and thank you for taking the time from your extremely busy schedules that all of you have personally and professionally to come and be with us here in Washington. We want to make sure that as we are talking about jobs and the economy today, to set the stage for what's going on. You know, there's been so much debate and concern in, in Washington and around the country. Uh, during the August recess that Congress just recently had, I spent several days going throughout the entire congressional district, meeting with businesses, business owners, workers, folks who were concerned about what can be done in their local community. One of the things that we're working on for Southeastern North Carolina is a Jobs Now, Jobs for Us plan that we're trying to implement to work with leaders like those on our show today. To first, help small business have better access to capital. Second, to make sure we're building in every way possible, whether it's bringing internet to help companies, businesses, healthcare, and our schools in our local area, much of which is going on right now, for instance, in Brunswick and Columbus County, as well as in Robinson County, or whether it's working on our beaches and trying to make sure that we can work with local communities in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, or whether it's working on our roads and highways and other ways and our airports in every way that we can to, to make sure we're building economic opportunity. A third way that we're working is to make sure that we are retraining those workers who unfortunately may have been displaced out of work and that we're helping with small business and entrepreneurship to make sure they're being fostered in the best way possible. And of course, who's helping us lead the charge on that? No one better equipped than our own community colleges and our universities and we're working with them in the small business centers, in the business and technology centers, in the worker retraining programs, as well as with local industry that have programs in that regard. Fourth, we are of course all concerned about reducing taxes and reforming the tax system and making sure that we are not sapping the very economic life out of our businesses. And then fifth, creating the jobs of tomorrow. Not only trying to help the current situation, which is extremely dire for many people, but also looking ahead to be preparing our college graduates, our folks going to technical and trade schools and to community colleges to get ready. And that means everything from developing small business to also making sure that whether it's educational opportunity for young people or for those going back to school as older adults, whether it's the green energy technology, whether it's the new marine biotechnology center coming to UNCW that we were able to assist with from the federal level, or many other examples that you may hear about during this program today. So I was grateful to hear from many of you as I traveled throughout Southeastern North Carolina on our Jobs For Us plan that we are working on. But today we wanna hear from some other folks here in Southeastern North Carolina. 
And so I want to turn to them now and, and let's get started and just find out what you feel are the most pressing issues with regard to job opportunity in your particular community, in your chamber or the town or county where you live, and what are some of the things being done about it. And uh, we know the seriousness of, of what's going on, so I want to start out on a positive note. If uh, each of you could maybe share with us one thing you're doing right now to help hit head on the concern about jobs or business development in your particular community. Uh, Commissioner Barfield is uh, <laughs> the leader of uh, the great city of Wilmington and the great county of New Hanover and uh, being so involved obviously in the efforts there as a county commissioner as well as the chamber. Can, can you share with what you're doing down at the coast? Our board of commissioners recently had our first strategic planning session back in January and we identified economic development as our number one priority. And with that, we actually allocated quite a few dollars to that particular initiative. And we partnered a lot with our local community college, Cape Fear Community College, as well as our Committee of 100 in trying to recruit and, and, and try to get businesses to our community. And I think by moving in that direction, we're gonna bring more jobs to our community. And as you talked about uh, economic development being the number one issue, which it, it is for us and out of this office, and I know uh, for folks everywhere, they're concerned about the job situation. Uh, did you find that you're running into certain impediments to what you're trying to get done? Are there certain ways you've identified? We know these are the hurdles, but here's how we're going to try to overcome them. Uh, the main thing is making sure we have a qualified workforce and our community college really plays a big role in that. I've had a number of dinner meetings with companies that are looking at New Hanover County as a place to set up shop. And we always have our community college president at the table being a part of that discussion and recognizing the fact that they can retrain or retool workers within our community to get them up to speed for whatever company's coming in. General Electric, for instance, they may, they, they may New Hanover County their nuclear headquarters of the, of the world. And so we're partnering with them to train workers here in New Hanover County to get them up to speed to work in that particular facility. Verizon Wireless is another that made a call center there. And we put those folks in contact with our local community college, got them trained. Now we have well over 1,100 workers that are working at Verizon in a call center based on our community college partnering with local industry coming to our community. And I know Corning has made some great advances uh, with the concern about broadband and uh, has expanded their business base as well. So. Right there, you've got uh, three major industries in the Wilmington area, which affect all of Southeast North Carolina, because I know workers come in from several different counties to work. Uh, but those, indeed, are, are some great examples. Uh, Jay, what about on the other end of the district, up near Lumberton? Tell me what you've got going on with the chamber there, and, and what do you think is a positive move in helping jobs and the business concerns in Robinson County and the western part of our district? Well, I think as far as positive uh, activity in Robinson County and Lumberton, I'd say a, a probably our, our hospital is leading the way there. Um, we've got a, uh, we've partnered with Duke uh, Hospitals, uh, creating a world-class heart center there. We're seeing a lot of expansion in that side, and I know they've got some, some plans on the drawing board right now to even expand what they're doing in, in, in pushing health care out to, to uh, all the ends of the county. Um, also, we're seeing a lot of of good development in our education. Um, Robinson Community College as well as UNC Pembroke, they're doing a lot to help displaced workers and, uh, and uh, educating uh, their students so that they're prepared to tap into that growth in the healthcare profession as well as training them up so that they can be um, interjected into the, the workforce. So I'm seeing a lot of good stuff there. Also would like to mention we're seeing a lot of good activity in tourism in Robinson County. Um, we just got the 2010 numbers in. We had over $116 million um, in, injected into the Robson County economy due to tourism related jobs in 2010. Um, we've got about 1,000 people employed in tourism related industry, um, and those 1,000 jobs uh, account for about a $17 million payroll. So, uh, those, that's, we're seeing good activity in tourism. That's a viable thing. And of course, we're strategically located. You know, we've got, we're an hour from the beach, you know, an hour from all the golf you'd like to play in Pinehurst, four hours from the mountains. We've got I-95 and I-74 running through us. Um, we're, we're, we, we've learned that uh, we, there's a lot of opportunity there for us to tap into the tourism growth. Well, let me mention briefly, because I want to hear from our other guests, uh, but I know that um, bumper sticker that we have that we're promoting through our office and have worked with the chambers on, and I think it's coming to fruition now, is that we'll get more with 74. And I-74 affects the entire area of southeastern North Carolina and, and cuts right through the heart of 
some of the areas with the greatest economic needs as well as the greatest economic opportunities, literally going from uh, the Maxton area in the western edge of Robinson County all the way down to our coast. So it, it slices right through the heart of southeastern North Carolina. And I know we'll bring more economic opportunity and growth for tourism across the board in southeastern North Carolina, as well as have other benefits for um, tying in I-95 with troop movement and supply movement from Fort Bragg and uh, helping our military and, and all the other benefits that we get commercially. Uh, and one other area I know that's uh, exciting development in Lumberton that I was able to attend recently is the Southeastern Waterworks. Uh, taking the old water plant in downtown Lumberton, which had been in a state of disrepair, which I remember touring in kindergarten, and making it a, literally a state-of-the-art art center that will have an art studio, potential for a restaurant, I understand, canoeing on the Lumber River, uh, potentially an amphitheater in the future. Um, can you share some about the initiative behind that? Thank you for the opportunity. We're very excited about Southeastern Waterworks project. And I think that that project is just another example of how great our citizens are and what their drive is to, uh, to, uh, to do something great for the economy and, and to pull together. Um, private citizens have banded together. The goal is to raise $2 million in capital privately in order to restore that building and, uh, and basically create a mecca for arts, arts awareness and art appreciation um, and, and tapping into our tourism growth as well, making it a destination for historic downtown Lumberton. But uh, I can't brag enough about our people. We've got, as you know, Mike, we've got the best people in the world in Robson County and I think that's just another example of how we privatize to make things better. Other examples you're well, well aware of, um, what we've done with recreation in, in, in Lumberton. Um, we basically privatized it with the creation of Lumberton Football Association, Lumberton Youth Baseball Association, and Lumber River Soccer Association. Um, um, all raised uh, private funds and are doing great things athletically to uh, enhance the lives of our young people. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, uh, and I especially am close to the recreation programs having grown up in those programs and my dad having coached me. And we've started a Congressional Caucus on Youth Sports and some of our viewers may not be aware of that. Uh, but you're exactly right. In all of your communities, I know of great recreational programs. We've hosted events district-wide for recreational leaders to help promote uh, childhood fitness, to help fight childhood obesity, which is a major health problem. It's a preventive effort to help those who are already engaged in recreation sports and youth programs, uh, making sure that our uh, young people are learning how to be physically fit and not just sitting at home playing the electronic games that we know they're so attracted to but also supporting the adults who volunteer, who give of their time, and the corporate sponsors, making sure from the national level we're supporting those kind of community programs. That doesn't need to be reinvented as a government program. It needs the support from all levels of government. I know Olson Park in Wilmington, I was there for the dedication of that last summer. Uh, we've hosted our youth sports events in Wilmington for all of southeastern North Carolina, and I've uh, been to several of the recreation activities uh, just this past summer in the communities throughout our area. Well, I talked about I-74 cutting through the heart of the district, and I-74 and I-76 meet right there near Whiteville. Uh, Esther, tell us what you feel like is a positive coming about to help with economic issues in Columbus County. Well, we're kind of at the other end of the spectrum. We're looking for retirees okay. uh, through our Discover Columbus First program. Um, we've advertised what's available in Columbus County and um, have attracted some some retirees and are getting more and more response to the ads that we've put out. So uh, we're real happy to have 74 and 95 is not that far away. They can just cut right, right. off and, right. and come on in for people who want to be near the beach but can't afford the property at the beach. They, they get more house and more land for the dollar in a county like Columbus because we've got lots of land. Right, and, so the uh, cost of living is an issue obviously for senior citizens especially. Right. It, it is for everyone, believe me. <laughs> but, uh, but I know senior citizens on limited and fixed incomes especially. Um, right. and, and that's the draw that y'all are trying to pull in is right. to come to a, a small town flavor and community. Where we have a river and mm -hmm. a, a beautiful lake. and. Uh, well, in fact, uh, take the lake at Lake Waccamaw. I was there for the kickoff of that on Labor Day weekend, what an exciting event that's grown to be. Really, and, and, uh, and we have people from young to old right, participating in those types of things. In and fact, Mr. McNeil that rings the bell to start the race is in his 90s, right? right. World he War II veteran. And he'll keep on ringing yeah. <laughs> as and, long as uh, he can. And helping our veterans is another exciting issue that we're working on. But before we change gears on that, tell us about Clinton and Sampson County. You know, sitting here listening to y'all discuss 
uh, you know, advantages and, and what's working. We, we share similar things. You know, we're closer to the coast. We got a few hour drive to the mountains. But, you know, talking with local business leaders and asking, hey, what's working in your area? It's the same thing that's always worked. And that's just hard work, innovation, elbow grease, and, and, and thinking outside mm -hmm. the box. Uh, we've got some, some nice uh, sized companies that have, uh, they're doing fairly well this year, doing really well. So, um, and some opportunities for some more to come. I know we're working on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we've had some expansion with local businesses, and and you know, you talk to the greatest people in the world. We have some of the greatest workforce as well. You know, we we all kind of like to throw that out there. Oh, yeah. But um, what I find it, what, talking with business leaders and stuff is is our people are, are very willing to be trained, and uh, just like you have the community college system there, you know, that is such an important aspect of our economic development. Um, uh, we've got a great, of course, being agricultural. Right. Uh, they're real strong there. Um, a real strong ag department there at the SEC that's, that's training people from all their states. Right. So, uh, yeah, I was going to ask you to tell us about that because uh, I mentioned earlier the Army Corps of Engineers and are trying to build out and help the coast. Um, two mainstays of the economy in our region are the coast and then in the rural areas, agriculture. Tell us what you see on the horizon to help promote agriculture and, and agribusiness and how that in turn affects the economy of our region? Well, you know, it's doing well. You know, it, with corn prices and stuff, that's going to be an issue. You know, you talk with some farmers, depending on which side they are of the ethanol issue, you right. get you get uh, various opinions. Um, we're very heavily with integrators as far as poultry and swine. Um, the grain prices are definitely having an impact on them. The swine, uh, th they're doing pretty good. The, their market, their herd is, is the lowest it's been, I think, in 20 or 30 years. So they actually should be uh, making a profit. But I think the poultry side of our ag, the integrators, uh, they're hurting. They're hurting with the, with the high prices. And uh, again, that's, you know, who, who to blame? You know, you talk to one side, they blame the ethanol issue. But, um, other than that, our, our other farmers, I think, are doing quite well. Um, our, our grain, our vegetables, uh, tobacco, um, they're, they're doing well. So uh, we're pleased there and we've seen some growth there. Yeah, that's encouraging. That's good. Well, the farm bill is coming up. Uh, next year, we'll enter full throttle into the debate with the hopes of then having the farm bill in place for the next five years. And to me, really, it's a misnomer just to say the farm bill because we all are concerned about our farmers, obviously, who do such a wonderful job providing food and fiber. But we know that uh, the farm bill is much more than, than helping the farmers. It's helping our rural communities. It's helping 85% of North Carolina is classified as rural. And the math is e easy because 85 of our 100 counties are rural. And all of the counties in southeastern North Carolina are classified as rural except for New Hanover, which of course is right on the coast and has Wilmington growing by leaps and bounds. But um, even parts of Cumberland County are considered eligible for rural development funds. And we've seen a big difference that USDA has made in our area. Fire stations, police stations, sheriff's departments, small business, healthcare facilities. Uh, a lot of ways people didn't realize that rural development through USDA that we're able to help from the federal level to make sure that our citizens in rural areas are not forgotten or in coastal areas. A lot of our smaller beach towns um, have benefited as well uh, in their fire departments and in their water and sewer programs. I think of the Rocky Point Topsail Water Sewer Project with all the tremendous growth in Pender County. So um, as we look ahead on the horizon economically, the Farm Bill is going to be major and I invite our viewers to contact our office with concerns you may have about rural economic development. That ties right into our discussion today as well. Um, I did mention veterans, uh, and I want to just touch on that. This, our discussion is on business and economic development, but we know that our veterans clinics play a role as folks retire. Our great military bases, they like the area. They like to hunt and fish in our beautiful lakes and rivers. They like to go to the beach. They like to play golf. Uh, there are great attractions. There are also jobs because we know there are several programs targeted toward hiring veterans so that they do have a job opportunity. And uh, we have new veterans clinics in Brunswick and Robinson County. We have the uh, improvements of the VA in Fayetteville. And then we're looking forward in just the next very few weeks now, Commissioner, of opening the Super Regional Clinic in Wilmington that will serve virtually all of southeastern North Carolina to help our veterans. So another major step to improve the quality of life, which in turn directly impacts business and opportunity and retirement in the economy of our area. We're very excited about that. Well, one thing we also want to talk about was uh, 
What do you think of the major challenges? Um, you've touched some with regard to the ethanol issue and, and how corn prices in turn affect the grocery store for everybody and families, but in restaurant prices, I had some restaurant owners. We have some great restaurants, obviously, in our area of North Carolina. Uh, but we've also heard um, from the farmers and how uh, it's, it affects um, what it costs them for their feedstock. Uh, tell us the, the major issues you all see uh, in your area, perhaps, of southeastern North Carolina that may affect others as well, but, and how you think your community can address those and how we can help from the federal level as well. Jay, you've got some. You yeah, I, um, I, we spoke a little bit before about how, how what the great job our community college and UNCP is doing preparing workers for the workforce. But of course, all that is for naught if there are no jobs for those folks to, to migrate into. So I think anything we can do to um, uh, reduce regulation or restriction on employers, that, that is good for small business. Um, one thing that, that I've heard time and time again in our community um, is the some tax reform stuff that's going on. For instance, now uh, a small business owner can purchase up to $500,000 in equipment and take an immediate uh, tax expense on that rather than depreciating it over its useful life. And I've heard a lot of folks uh, commenting on how positively that's helped them. Um, but again, as, as a general broad stroke, I think that if, if, if by reducing regulation, um, I think we're enhancing the ability uh, of those employers to, to create jobs and hire more folks. Well, you know, that's uh, the number one thing I hear in talking to small business owners. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I traveled through the district during the August recess and met with numerous uh, business owners and employers and prospective industrial recruitment opportunities. And several of y'all know about those possible projects in your respective counties. Uh, but government regulation that strangles the opportunity for business development is the number one issue I hear in access to capital. And we've worked with several of our small banks, our community banks, as well as our regional banks um, on how best to do that. And, uh, and that is something that is a great concern that we're working on. And we want to make sure that those businesses do have access to capital and that they're not being routinely just turned down when they have a good history in their local communities and who better knows that than the local community bankers and uh, those folks from the, the regional banks and even the larger banks that have roots or ties to our local communities that can help. Uh, I know with the small business initiatives we want to make sure that we get government out of the way. That's probably the simplest way to put it when it comes to these regulations and uh, to ease up so that our business and our innovation, that creative spirit, can be something that can take off and give us opportunity. Um, what about in New Hanover? What do you think are some hurdles that need to be overcome to, to help with job growth and business opportunity? You know, what I hear is, is less bureaucracy, less levels of government, number one, but also the proper infrastructure. What I, and what I mean by that is a trained workforce, a government that's willing to offer some type of economic incentive, typically tax incentives. And I find that when we sit at the table with companies that are looking at coming to Hanover County, they want to make sure that the numbers work for both the city of Wilmington and Hanover County in terms of taxes they're going to pay. Can we get reduced taxes for two, three, four, ten years? And that will help us with our bottom line. But also, can we get our workforce trained? When you talk about the VA clinic coming to Hanover County, recognizing that our local community college has one of the highest graduation rates for nurses. But we also have a nursing college right there at UNCW right. Wilmington as well which is doing a great job. Yeah. So when you start building things like a VA clinic, when you start building things like the new addition to our community college downtown, you're putting people to work, number one, construction related. But also our governance also fast-tracked the building of the I-140 connection to, from uh, I-40 to I-140 to Brunson County. That's going to put people to work as well and get our traffic moving around, get those trucks that are coming to our community back and forth a lot quicker, which makes our community much more viable. When you look at the addition of I-40 coming into Northern County, it really opened up the door for industry to come to our community. So we need more road infrastructure as well to make sure that we have adequate transportation going back and forth. One thing that we're working on on the local level is trying to find a way to reconnect the uh, railroad line between Wallace and right. Raleigh. We've, we've been working with um, local officials on that too, so yes, you're exactly right. That's exciting, and working with some of the recent announcements to help the Wilmington Airport, we've been excited about that and, and how that gateway opens up economic opportunity for the whole region. We've got just a couple minutes left. Tell us a challenge that you see that, that we can help you address or that your community is working together on to address. Cash, and everybody here has talked about the community college and the need to educate workers. 
we've got to have they've got to have money to be able to go to school so the federal grants don't the need Pell to grants, the Pell grants absolutely yeah, need to be there those, and yes. uh, any support even below that i mean they if they get to the community community colleges and they have to be uh, rehabilitated because they didn't learn what they you know needed to learn earlier then you've wasted a lot of money so we we, we don't need to cut any of the money to education if we can Anything absolutely. you can do to support that absolutely. at all ends, both yes, ends. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's one of my great joys is spending time in our schools at all levels. And uh, you're exactly right. What about up your way in Clinton and Sampson? What do you think is the greatest challenge or what y'all are doing to try to overcome it? Talking with three different lenders from three different banks and I got the same answer. And it, it was bureaucracy, right. like you're talking about. Uh, it, they just feel like the innovation is stifled because they mm -hmm. can't. The regulations in place. It's not as easy for them to. You now I understand we went. We they understand we went through what we went through, but they're seeing it's affecting now innovation in our area right. and uh, an easier way for them to to be able to loan that money mm -hmm. to our small businesses. Speaking about transportation opportunities, mm -hmm. um, the I-295 project, which is currently funded and planned to connect Ramsey Street to Fort Bragg. Um, there's some additional planning in place that would connect it from Fort Bragg to I-95 just inside the Robinson right. County border. North of Paul's. I believe if that plan could be funded, I believe that would bring some great opportunity in northern Robinson County um, and would uh, convert Robinson County into a bedroom community mm -hmm. for Fort Bragg, oh, similar yeah. to what we've seen in Harnett yeah. County. Yeah. Well, thank you. We're running quickly out of time. We appreciate you joining us. You can see it's just the beginning of a great discussion. Uh, you can go to our website to learn more. Uh, we have a federal website that you can simply enter my name and Google it and look for U.S. Representative Mike McIntyre. We thank you all for joining us today, and we're excited about the Business and Econ Economic Summit up here and the very special guests that we have today. Uh, please continue to pray for us, wisdom, and the decisions we make, and for your local and state leaders as well. May God bless all of you all. Thank you for joining us for Capital Conversations, and thank you for making Southeastern North Carolina the wonderful place that we love and call home.